All right, today I was checking my email and I saw a link to Consumer Reports Best and Worst Cars of the Year. I don't listen to these guys. I don't listen to journalists. I'm going to buy whatever I want. But some people live by the word of a journalist. So if you look at the comments, some people are really pissed off, man. I guess they don't want to feel bad about their $40,000 purchase. And it gives them a warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, for some journalist to tell them that they bought the best car, I guess. I just buy what I want. But since it's a car article, of course I'm going to click on it. And this list is really interesting. This video is in no way trying to offend anybody, so you know, don't don't take it too seriously. Enjoy your car. If your car is in the worst section, just enjoy it. If it makes you happy, smile. Drive it, have fun. Okay. Let's see the winners and losers here. According to Consumer Reports, this is a pretty bad list, but uh, let's go ahead and check it out. Compact subcompact car, Toyota Prius is the best, worst is the Volkswagen Beetle. My only real experience with Volkswagen is my sister bought a brand new Jetta in uh, 2004. That was her dream car, that particular shape, and the car was a lemon, bunch of electrical problems, she traded it in for a Mazda 3 2005 she still has it it has like a hundred thirty four thousand miles and it's been trouble free you know that was a heartbreaker for her to you know that her dream car was a piece of junk I don't know if that's true with all Volkswagens but you know, that's my experience with Volkswagen Beetle is a good looking car though you know, if you're into that sort of thing now the Prius I like Priuses believe it or not I like the Volt more even though the Volt is the devil's car, Obama's car, even though it was developed in the Bush administration. But, you know, maybe that's why I like the car, because it has such a bad vibe to it. It's the devil's car, and that just makes me like the car more, that it's so hated. But uh, the Prius, I mean, it's an okay car. I think you're better off buying, like, a Hyundai Accent, because, you know, it's going to take a while you know, it's going to take a lot of gas money to catch up for that hybrid premium. So, that's what I would buy if I bought a brand new small car, some Hyundai Accent or Kia Rio or something. Mid-sized car, Subaru Legacy. Don't really hear anything bad about Subarus. 2.5. Uh, Nissan Altima, 3.5. That's the V6. That's a pretty powerful engine. I don't know, maybe they don't like it because it's probably not that good on gas compared to a 2.5 you know Subaru Legacy it's not even in the same class Avalon Hybrid for large cars uh, Ford Taurus eh, that's pretty comparable they're in the same class at least they're uh, Lexus ES300 if you're gonna buy a luxury car buy a fake luxury car Infiniti Lexus they're just rebadged Toyotas and Nissans um, BMW 750 that's a real luxury car but notice people unload their beamers once they're out of that warranty period they're not worth as much they don't want to deal with those repair bills but hey does that make it a bad car that's nah, an expensive car so buy it if you have the money sports cars convertibles I mean this is not even in the same class Mazda uh, Mazda MX-5 Miata was the best the worst is a Camaro convertible. They're not even in the same class of sports cars, but, you know, for best, the Mazda Miata, it's a good car. It's a great handling car. It has that chick car vibe, but, you know, I have no problems with Miatas. Now, Camaro convertible, I don't know. Maybe they don't like it because it's kind of pricey. Chugs gas, who knows. Now, wagons and minivans, I mean, again, this list is... A little off, man. The Mazda 5, that's a, that's a pretty cool minivan. It's the only minivan available with the manual. But it's it's really small, man. you got to be a family of, like, six people under five feet tall to really fit in that. Like, a uh, Chrysler Town and Country, that's a, you know, decently sized van for a normal size family. I don't know if Dodge has improved their transmissions, but, you know, in the 90s, they had really horrible transmissions I don't know if that's still the case all right uh, small SUV Forester 2.5 then the Ford Escape uh, 1.6 turbo that's in the same class at least 
Now this is what made me really say like, what the, what the fuck's wrong with this list? Midsize SUV, Nissan Murano is the best, the worst is a Jeep Wrangler. I mean, <laughs> Nissan Murano is a mall runner. The Jeep Wrangler, I mean, you know, it's, they're proven off-road. In five years, what's going to hold more value? Guaranteed it's the Jeep Wrangler. It might be a Chrysler product, but Jeeps hold their value. Maybe the ride's too hard for consumer reports. That was really strange. And then luxury, large SUVs, BMW. They have a BMW in the worst, and they have a BMW in the best section. Like I said, if you're rich, drive a Beamer. If you could afford that maintenance after the the warranty. Nissan Armada, it was, it's about 15 years too late. The Nissan Armada would have been great in the 90s, but the big SUV is pretty much dead. No one really drives those anymore. And then here's a, here's a worse comparison, pickups. Honda Ridgeline, and the worst is a Ford F250, 6.7. I believe that's the diesel. I mean, Honda Ridgeline's not even a real truck. Uh, last time I saw Honda Ridgeline, I don't know if they fixed this. Hopefully they did, but the spare tire, like the way the bed is, there's like a little panel, like a little mini trunk. So, you know, that's where the spare tire is. So, let's say your bed is full of stuff and you get a flat. You're going to have to remove everything out of the bed to change a flat to get that spare tire. Honda Ridgeline, what is that? That's a Honda... That's a that's a truck built on a Accord, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. You know, not bashing the Ridgeline, but it's not a real truck. If you like your Ridgeline, fine, it's cool. But freaking F-250 Ford's the worst. That thing could tow like 20,000 pounds, I believe, with the fifth wheel. That's not even in the same class. Try towing 20,000 pounds with the Ridgeline. But you know, whatever. Interesting best and worst list. I always like looking at these. I don't get rage from them. It's a stupid list, but you know my life is <laughs> my life is no better or worse. You know, whatever what journalists say, that's cool. Anyway, hope everyone's doing great. I just been really busy lately, picking up overtime. I got a few projects I'm working on, so I just wanna check in, you know, talk about some cars. All right, everyone, have a kick-ass holiday, whatever it is you celebrate. Kick-ass, be safe, and take it easy.